Hello, everyone. My name is Brad Shimon. I'm Chief Analyst for, for AI Platforms, Analytics, and Data Management at Omdia. Uh, welcome to our fast chat on transforming application development with Java. It's my pleasure to welcome as guest today, Manish Gupta, who is VP for Java and GraalVM Global Marketing at Oracle. Manish, welcome to our chat. Thanks, Brad. Great to be here with you. Now, uh, I'd like to start um, by, by talking about complexity uh, and that um, at Omdia, in, in looking at the marketplace, we see um, very much that it is very much the case that um, there, are a lot, there are a lot of different pressures on IT organizations to uh, not just um, manage existing software to maintain it, but to also modernize it and perhaps even transform it, moving it to the cloud, as well as coming up with new ideas and supporting those. And when you do that as an IT organization over time, that, that inevitably leads to some pretty complex tool chains uh, on the development side. And um, this is especially true um, when you start to introduce uh, open source technologies in, into that mix. And when you rely upon them as you might do for uh, a software development language like Java. So uh, my, my question to you is, um, we've all seen over the last uh, couple of years, a, a really profound move by Oracle to take the uh, life cycle of Java itself and make it something that is more consumable, both for those that, that need to move rapidly and for those that need to function you know, in, in a very uh, staid um, stable uh, way over time. So, uh, for example, uh, I, I note that you guys have very recently moved to a two-year two release cycle for your long-term support releases of Java. And before that, you would also move to a, a six-month release cycle uh, for the, the you know, Java releases proper, so version 16, version 17. Um, Tell me something, will you? Uh, you know, what is the thought process behind that? How do, do those synergies between those two moves in particular help companies to, to manage their complexities over time? You know, being a language that's been around and development platform that's been around for over 26 years, we have seen the term complexity evolve in its own definition as far as application development goes. Um, you know, we used to think about mainframe development, uh, moving on to distributed architectures, moving into trying to support edge applications, uh, mobile applications. And today, of course, uh, everybody is focused on microservices and cloud native development. Um, the, the one thing that's a constant across time horizon and constant across these diversities of challenges uh, and evolutions in, in platforms is the way to solve complexity is through innovation. And, and innovation comes in many forms and many features and capabilities. So Java development has ensured through the past 25, 26 years that we bring in capabilities that continue to bring value to the developers, whether it is improving their, uh, their life every day, making it easier for them to be more productive, whether it is easier to deploy at scale, whether it is improving security and, and so on. Um, in, in addition to innovation, we've also tried to bring in more recently uh, the concept of predictability. Uh, when, when you have development timelines that are it's unclear, the next release is going to be two years out, three years out, four years out, uh, you're not sure it's going to have 20 features or 100 features. Uh, it becomes some, somewhat difficult to, to plan your, uh, your application cycles. And, and given the world we live in where the entire life cycle of an application might only be a few months, um, sometimes a year, maybe if you're lucky, it might be a couple of years, uh, you, you have uh, a need to move faster. Mm -hmm. And so when we introduced a six month release cadence, it was with the intention of both ensuring that the innovation and the new capabilities are brought to the developers at a faster pace, but at the same time, giving the managers, the CIOs and the DevOps managers a much more predict predictable environment so that they could plan their releases, they could plan overall evolution of their own architectures. Uh, and, and so those are the two kind of two fundamental premises of innovation and predictability. And, and the, the most recent long-term support release, as you noted, moving from three years to two years, is, is really about giving the larger organizations an ability to move things in production 
at two-year cadence versus a three-year cadence. So, you know, many fast-moving organizations are keeping up with the six-month releases that come out, whether 13, 14, 15, 16. And we've seen that adoption happen at a very quick pace. But for larger deployments or very large-scale uh, application uh, movements, the organizations might prefer to stay with long-term support releases. And so they would have to wait every three years. With this change, it's down to three years. So that's been kind of the overall Java ecosystem um, movement. And, and we're seeing some very, very positive uh, response on that. On, on a customer front, you know, we have we've tried to take it a step further. That's about three years ago, we introduced Java SE subscription. And the idea was, if you're managing an application of state that may have diversity of versions, you might be running Java 8, Java 7, may perhaps move, move some of the applications, Java 10, Java 11, and 12, uh, you've got a mix of versions. And so how do you ensure you're maintaining security posture, you're maintaining your governance and compliance and meeting the requirements? Um, with the Java SE subscription, we provide to our customers updates to releases that have reached end of public updates as well. So with that, you get the flexibility of moving at the pace that works for your business. You can move some of your portfolio, all of your portfolio, none of your portfolio at the six month cadence that works for you, um, uh, and you can mix and match. So that flexibility was really the primary um, motive behind offering that, and it seems to be working well. The Java SE subscription from Oracle now has been adopted by thousands of organizations around the world in over 23 industries that we track uh, ranging from certainly you know, 50% of the Fortune 500 all the way down to small development houses of five employees or 10 employees. So we are delighted to see that the value is serving the needs not just of the larger end, but of the entire ecosystem, regardless of the size. Yeah, that's very interesting. I um, you know, very much appreciate the um, importance of being able to, to choose both and not having to pick one over the other uh, in particular. And if you don't mind, as a, as a quick follow-up to that, Manish, um, you know, when you look out at the Java ecosystem uh, of customers that you have, um, you know, what are the sweets, what's the sweet spot or what are the, the, the most common use cases where you see Customers saying, "Yep, I, I'm going to have this project running running on the long-term support release. This project running on the six-month release." Yeah, um, it, it really varies um, by the size of the organization, by the type of application, and by the the breadth of the portfolio that the organization has based on Java. Uh, what we're seeing is the applications that tend to have a very large user base, end user base, uh, tend to be the ones that move at, you know, let's say the LTS cadence. Mm -hmm. uh, programs that tend to be very um, end user consumer-ish in nature that have a faster evolution of new features, uh, they tend to be more at the six month cadence, but they want to take advantage of every new capability that comes about, either because of performance or better efficiency or a reduction in memory footprint whatever that might be as a driver, uh, they tend to have a shorter life cycles and hence need to move at a much faster clip than two year or three year cadence that used to be. That makes a lot of sense. And um, it's, it ties in with something that, that really caught my attention earlier, something you said about um, making you know, their everyday job better. <laughs> and uh, and you know, when I think about programming languages and I think about their evolution over time and which ones have stayed the, the course and which ones have grown and which ones have fallen away, um, I had always sort of thought that there are two camps. You, you either, you know, you have something like COBOL Fortran sticking around simply because there are, you know, tons and tons of mission critical apps that are still built on those. Uh, and the second is you have, um, you know, maybe not as many lines of code, but a super vibrant ecosystem where the libraries available to the developers are so good that you know you you would be a fool to use another language because you'd be wasting time writing code that somebody's already written for you in in um, you know let's say when, when you think about Python for example and, and its meteoric rise you know somebody's written everything you need to do in working with data into pandas as, as a library for instance so thinking about Java in that regard and I mean clearly the language has stayed the test of time you know over 25 years now. 
Um, but you know, from your perspective uh, at Oracle as the stewards for this language, what role do you want to play in encouraging that ecosystem development to, to help the ISVs and the actual developers in companies you know, that are your traditional enterprise companies to help both of those groups you know, to, to make the language better and to make themselves, you know, their jobs better and to, to help others down the road make their jobs better. Yeah. Um, it's an incredibly important element of our overall strategy for Java. Uh, we certainly want to meet the needs of our customers and the enterprise, make sure as they evolve that their trends, their requirements for both scale as well as the types of applications are fully supported by the capabilities. But, but I think, as you've rightly said, so that you, know, you need the large developer community. And we want to make sure that the community has the tools. They feel it's easy enough of a platform to work with. They feel like the ecosystem is there to support their requirements. So they're not enamored with the things that are not building efficiency into their execution. Um, ensure that the academic and education tools are available to them to ensure that we reduce the friction and the barriers and access to everybody and anybody around the world, no matter if they're a high school student, a middle school student, a university student, or early in their career or later in their career. Um, those tools are brought to, uh, and, and made available to foster the growth of user groups around the world. There are over mm -hmm. 350 user groups for Java and they continue to grow to ensure that uh, forums uh, are made available where cross-pollination of ideas and innovation uh, occurs in the ecosystem without Oracle's intervention, but we can provide the, the sponsor, sponsoring uh, di di dynamics and dimensions of that uh, engagement. Um, Oracle University you know, has got Java certification recently mm -hmm. it's offered a freemium version. So you can start in your Java journey at no cost at all. And that's available. Oracle Academy has got a, a you know, suite of courses uh, built in Java, uh, which is meant for the university and, 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 uh, and younger students. And in fact, on Java certification, we're getting very close to a million certification by Oracle University. It's a milestone. Wow. Can't wait to, till we get there so we can uh, celebrate that in a big way around the world. Uh, but also bringing in fresh ideas and content. Uh, so recently we launched a new website dedicated to Java developers called dev.java. And on that you can see um, a fresh podcast. Uh, there's a, a playground and ability to, uh, to go and experiment with, uh, with the code, leverage code from various places and, and pull up and develop your application in a different place. Uh, and you'll see a lot more innovation coming around uh, through that channel. And, you know, this focus and, and the support of the last 10 plus years uh, since Oracle has had the stewardship of this ecosystem, uh, we have seen now the growth in the JVMs accelerate. Uh, just in a recent study, I noticed there were 56 billion JVMs actively deployed around the world, of 60% of those being you know, connected to the cloud. Uh, so not only on-prem, but also certainly uh, steering the cloud-native work. And, and uh, one of the analyst studies indicated that over 75% of all developers use Java one way or the other. And, and we have over 10 million full-time Java developers. So this vast ecosystem was not built in a day, right? It's been built over 25 years. And as the stewards, we feel, and we take this responsibility very seriously, to ensure that we can bring resources with as minimum friction as possible to the broadest audience set for developers while serving the needs of the enterprise. Yeah, you know, it's, it's funny, isn't it? Um, the last two years have really shown the importance of that you know, educational system as a foundation for future investments in technologies like programming languages. It's uh, some really great stuff going on there, Manish. Um, can I turn us, if you don't mind now, to, to um, back, back to complexity <laughs> and uh, fighting complexity? And uh, it, you made me think of it just then in talking about that, that vibrant ecosystem. And when I look at Java and the fact that you have an execution environment like the JVM and the language that runs in the execution environment, that, you, that is one I think of the, the main reasons why we have a vibrant ecosystem because it opens up so many opportunities. Uh, and so 
because of that, you end up with sometimes, you know, multiple versions and, and different iterations or, or renditions, if you will, of, of a JVM, let's say, or, a, a, you know, diff different languages even running here and there. And, um, you know, I understand that at Oracle, you guys have been working as, as a part of the Java SE subscription package to, to create a single pane of, of management uh, glass for uh, Java deployments um, that that is that has the ability to look across different um, platforms even to to see what's running where and to see what version it's on if it's been patched for example and gosh that sounds you know really uh, a paramount of, of paramount importance for for the you know, modern cloud native development in particular can you talk to us a little bit about that that platform tell us um, what what it does, if you would, and also if you can share with us a little bit about the future roadmap for that. Uh, certainly, Brad. Uh, you know this whole area of manageability of your Java state is uh, is really an important thing, particularly when you talk about enterprises that may have hundreds or sometimes thousands of applications built in Java. Um, how do you? What tools do you give them? How do you help those enterprises uh, and make their lives easier to manage this estate? Uh, you know, we've, we've always had uh, an advanced management console that's available on the desktop side uh, so that the operators and managers can manage that environment. And, and very recently, uh, we introduced a new service called Java Management Service. Uh, this is a native service on Oracle Cloud infrastructure that gives you visibility into your entire Java estate, whether it's running on Oracle Cloud, on any other cloud, running on-prem in a hybrid mode, multi-cloud environment. So regardless of deployment modality, you have the visibility. And the intention was to give you visibility, A, what do you have running, what versions it's running on. But second, perhaps even more important, is to give you insights that are actionable in nature. Uh, and insights could be such as, uh, uh, you know, you're running beneath the security baseline because, you know, X percentage of your applications are behind the latest releases and, and you need to catch up. Uh, perhaps at some point, uh, we'll give them capability to do auto uh, install and auto update uh, and bring them up to speed on uh, and, and update uh, for the various versions that uh, and bring them kind of in line with the security posture. This, which of course, undoubtedly will help them on the compliance front and data governance front and so on. Uh, so that's the second element. And the third element is around tuning. Um, which today is a bit of a manual process. We work with customers all the time. You know, our support organization in particular uh, helps and our consulting organization help organizations on tuning. Um, now, but we would like to automate that process and to perhaps offer direct insights uh, on actions that can be taken or perhaps even automate some of those actions to improve the performance over time of the deployed estate. Uh, so visibility insights and tuning are the three elements that the Java management service intends to bring as value, uh, as you said, in a single pane of glass. It's a native service running on Oracle Cloud, but supports the diversity of deployment modalities that exist in many enterprises. That's very much in line with what I what I see coming out of Oracle's database uh, with you know, Oracle Autonomous Data Warehouse, for example. Uh, where where AI can help to to tune queries and and optimize your spend uh, as well as security and for patching and such it's a uh, it's really a, a a kind of heady time right now with AI helping to to you know work in concert with humans to to augment decision making and to you know help help you know make make the lives of not just the developers but the administrators a little easier I like that it's a very meaningful and practical contribution to, to our customers. And you know, the way we have structured Java management service is to ensure that this is the, again, no barrier for them. So if you are a customer of Java as a subscription, you have access to the Java management service at no additional cost to you. Um, and so it's an important approach that we're taking that uh, the investment that the organizations have already made on Java uh, we just give them a tool uh, without creating any additional barriers so they can, their management becomes easier. Yeah, that, you know, there's one other tool that that brings to mind that, that's also included in, in um, Java SE uh, subscription um, uh, is a, the project called Graal VM, 
which I've been following for a little while now. And, uh, you know, it, it, when I think about, you know, modern cloud native application deployment strategies, you think about a diversity of deployment targets. So edge device server, you know, front end doesn't matter. Uh, you think about a diversity of supported languages, um, be, be that, you know, Java, C, Python, Scala, whatever. And uh, it's, it's curious to me, um, you know, just how this, this layer of abstraction that we have with the, the Java architecture can speak to, to that multiplicity uh, of, of deployment targets and languages that are being written in and how Graal VM in particular, uh, I think really, you know, targets that uh, in, in what it does and, and not just for performance because performance is really for startup times for, for programs, you know, greatly improved in using that. But, but I think also it, it helps to modernize the Java language itself, doesn't it? It, 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 it allows Java to, to you know, behave more in a more cloud native way uh, as, as a language. Um, can you, you know, talk us a little bit through, um, you know, how you think the Graal VM project is, is really enabling Java to modernize and to, to take advantage of, of things like, you know, not just containerization, but, but ideas like serverless computing. Could you do that for us? Uh, yeah, right. Absolutely. You know, Core VM has uh, really brought about tremendous amount of excitement uh, in the Java community, but also broadly, broader than that, across the app development community. Uh, but before I dive into Core VM, I just want to you know put some context in and so how this fits into the, the Java framework. Uh, the Java development has been about continuous improvement in performance, improvement in development productivity, improvement in support for new trends like. ML or AI or blockchain, whatever it might be, it's still continues to be the, the go-to platform for all of these trends. And, and the numerous projects that run within the open JDK are, are intending to support some of those dimensions, right? For example, Project Valhalla, it focuses on higher memory density, better performance of machine learning and big data apps. Uh, Project Panama is focused on delivering higher performance of IO intensive applications. Uh, Project Laden is meant to improve the startup time so there are numerous projects in concert bring value towards serving the needs of performance, of efficiency, productivity, and so on, right? But, but though that's an ongoing stream and a continuous innovation that goes on. GraalVM has almost put that uh, in, in super drive, if you may. Yeah. It's an Oracle, Oracle Labs innovation, been in the works for about 10 years. It's utilized internally by Oracle database for Oracle cloud infrastructure, many different applications like NetSuite and so on. You know, it's a high performance compiler, but it's a high performance polyglot compiler. So, so the power of this is certainly with JVM languages, but even beyond that to bring into the fold the, the capabilities of performance. When you're running in JIT mode, you can take your existing code and then get a performance boost. If you're running in ahead of time compilation mode, uh, you get instantaneous startup times, and you also get, most importantly, reduced memory footprint and reduced process mm. requirement, right? So this package of capabilities that gives you the performance boost while giving you uh, reduced consumption of resources is ideal for microservices. It's ideal for cloud native de development and deployment. Right? So if you think about all of those things connected to it, it really being a Java based uh, com com compiler but supports other languages, uh, what you have now is a phenomenal element brought to the Java ecosystem that takes Java forward into the modern trends. So, so it's just an acceleration of what Java normally does, uh, but it's bringing that precise capability now. And the Graalvium Enterprise, as you noted earlier, uh, again, we have made that as part of our Java SE subscription, so our customers have access to that at no additional cost. And I'll, I'll also add that uh, if you're an OCI customer, if you're running your workloads on Oracle Cloud, uh, you also have access to Graal VM Enterprise at no additional cost. Yeah, it seems like um, you know a functionality that, as an enterprise, you you would want to just turn on for for everything and have it as an option to to as you were describing there, be able to turn on you know different um, ways of behaving depending upon the application at hand and to handle the language at hand to handle the um, target. You know, deployment target at hand. That's 
that's what Java to me has always been about and something I think, you know, uh, Mr. Gosling would, would greatly appreciate, you know, in seeing the way that the language and the, and the JVM has evolved over, over this, you know, last 25 years is that adaptability. Uh, so I, I, fantastic stuff going on there. Um, thank you, Manish. And uh, I, I'm sorry, everyone, that this is all we have time for, um, for our fast chat today. And uh, as I said, Manish, thank you so much for, for joining me and speaking with me on this. Great to be here with you. Thank you, Brad.